Welcome everyone to our Monday night uh, shiur, Parashat Vayera. Before we start, a shiur is Lezecher Rachel Imenu, whose your side was Moses Motzei Shabbos. Zichutai Tegin Aleinu Al Amen. Amen. A shiur is also Latzlachat all the Mohalim, all the Mohels of Pal Yisrael, Mohels, the circumcisers. <laughs> that they should be successful in their job to be Shomer the Brit of all of Kali Yisrael. We're going to learn tonight right. in the Mila, mm -hmm. lately. By the way, you Levi'im, you guys had a Brit Mila before all of Kali Yisrael. You know, for 40 years, yeah. here, we Jewish people, we didn't have a Brit Mila in the desert. It was only the Bnei Levi, they took a Sikun. You know, the Sikun is a danger. And they did a Brit Mila for 40 years in the desert. And they're the ones who were the that, workers of the, 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 uh, uh, the Mishkan and the Bidu. Yeah, they were the, they're, they're the family right. of Kali Israel. They're the chosen ones. Even though Levi was the one who killed Shechem with, she, with Shimon, with Shimon, and Levi didn't have a Nachala, but always in the Torah we see there is a special zooming interest to this tribe. In the Kohanim Kohanim Levi. Levi are the, the rarest of Kali Israel. They're the smallest tribe always. <clears throat> So uh, they have 40 years on us. And also, by the way, there is room to say that in Mitzrayim, in Mitzrayim, the Levim also had Brit Milah over there. Yeah. In Mitzrayim. Yeah, they didn't work. It didn't work, but they had Brit Milah. Yeah, yeah. They, didn't, they didn't stop the halachot of Abraham Avinu. So that's a very big zechut for them. Goshen. Yeah. Well, I have a question. Not now. The shiur is also <laughs> at the end. I'm not forgetting. Don't forget, write it down. You're a sofer, no? No, my friend. All right. The shiur is also La Slachat Bishvat Shimonov, Israel Shimonov ben Asher, Israel ben Lea, Michal bat Hana, Yosef Chaim, Abigail, Dishev, and Sarah bat Michal. Hashem should send this family a lot of bracha and slacha. Amen. Amen. And also, we want to say that our shiur should be coming up is the your site of the hero. Of the Hanukkah story, Matatiyal ben Yochanan Kohen Gadol. When is his your site? Wednesday night. The Jewish Wednesday night. Right? So that means the Goyim Wednesday night is already, you know, for us the night starts before. Right? So right now is the 13th. Tuesday is the 13th. Wednesday is the 14th. Thursday is the 15th. So Wednesday night. Thursday is the 15th, that's the yard site of Matatiao Ben Yochanan Kohen Gadot. That was his yard site. It's a very big thing if a person wants to reach Misirut Nefesh, to learn how to give his Neshama for Hashem to be Midabik Ben Matatiao Ben Yochanan Kohen Gadot. There's no descendants of the Hashemonayim today. They're done. We're their descendants in the Hanukkah. I told you guys this in the name of the Chalban Kadosh that every day of Hanukkah, one of the Ushpizim comes to your house. Forget about their sukkah. No more sukkah. They come to your house. But only for half an hour. In the name of the Chalban. That half an hour that you like your menorah. That Abraham is in your house. Yitzchak, Yaakov. Who's in the eighth? We said that in the night of your sukkah. Uh, 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 um, uh, Navi, Navi. Uh, Eliyahu Navi. Eliyahu Navi. That's the eighth night. Eliyahu Navi. Avoy Vaser Lanu Tagoy. Tonight. We're going to talk about a brief milah. We know that last week, Parshat Lech Lecha, Abraham Avinu got a brief milah for the first time. And the kasha is, if Abraham Avinu knew the whole Torah, we know Adam was circumcised, Noah was circumcised. Mm -hmm. When he was born, he was Good. fully circumcised. What do you mean by fully circumcised? He had very... There's two parts to your brief. You see on the board, guys, it says over here, Yesod. Yesod, right? That's your brief. I'm just gonna make it a bit darker. Yud, Sameh, Vav, Dalet. Yesod, see that? Yesod? Your Yesod has, when you're born, has two coverings to it. See, one, two, and this is your actual Brit. You have two coverings. One is called Esav, one is Yishmael. Mm -hmm. When the Mohel does a Brit Milah for your child, he has to have Kavanah to cut off Esav and to rip up Yishmael. 
That's the Kavana he's supposed to have if he's really Mekaben on Piyasod. The last Kli of the Yisod is called Kodesh HaKodashi. So you have Kodesh, Kodesh, mm-hmm. you have Kodesh and another Kodesh, then you have Kodesh HaKodashim. So you walk into the Beit HaMikdash, you reach the Kodesh. The Yisod is the Kodesh, it's the Beit HaMikdash. You walk in another couple of steps to the inner gate, you reach the Hechal, that's the inner Kodesh. Then you reach the inner part, only the Kohen Gadol goes there on Yom Kippur, that's the in part. See over here, you saw it? Uh, Ariel. Yes. That's Kodesh HaKodeshi. The Mohel with his Kavana has to be able to rip Esav. When I say rip Esav, I mean he has to cut him off. Cut him off and the true power to do that is in the father. The father has the true power to do that, the father of the child. And the inner, the, the middle part is the Priya. The Priya is the inner membrane on top of the Brit. Your Brit, when you're born, has a Orla, the foreskin. And inside the foreskin, there is a membrane. Like, you know the egg? You have an egg, right? You have the white part. Then you have like that part that peels off, that small white part. You know, it's clear. That's the membrane. So you have to rip that. That's why Mohalim, when they do the fiasso, they grow their, their fingernails to rip that part off. Today, Mohalim, they like to do clean jobs. Like in the hospitals. So what do they do? With their fingers, they take the, the foreskin and the membrane and they rip off with the knife at the same time. It's not the fiya sod. The fiya sod, they're doing it wrong. The fiya alakha, to make it nice and clean, you want to make the brick clean, right? That the, only the brick should be seen. So they just rip off both. But according to the sod, you have to leave a bit of this. You see this part in black? That's the membrane. You have to leave a bit of it. You're not supposed to cut that off. You're supposed to rip, rip, rip it. it. With the nail, rip it. That way, the child has a bit of the kedusha because Yishmael had a brit milah. Esav never had a brit milah. So Esav, you have to cut off completely. You have to rip him off. No kaf zechut for Esav. He has to go to Elif Gehenom. But Yishmael, yeah, Yishmael, the Navi, the Navi says, the Navi says, in the future, when Mashiach comes, the prophet Isaiah says, who will be the first nation to bring Korbanot to Hashem? Kedar. Kedar is Saudi Arabia. It's the Gulf states. They're going to be the first ones to bring Korbanot to Hashem from all the Goyim. From all the Goyim, they're going to be the first. Why? Because their Zechut of the Brit Milah that their father had at the age of 13 is going to give them the power to realize Hashem first. Not Esav. Esav doesn't have that zechut. They don't have that zechut. Esa- what? That what? So. Even though they don't wait for eight days, the, the Zohar in Parshat Vayera says that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave the power of Ishmael to rule over Eretz Yisrael, to rule over Eretz Yisrael, because they have a Brit Milah. Esav never had a Brit Milah. He was red when he was born. So they thought that he was sick. So therefore, they never gave him a brit milah. When he was too old, he never ex- uh, he didn't allow himself to get a brit milah. Maybe his father told him, get one, and he said, I did, or not, who knows. But he never got a brit milah, and also his descendants, they don't have brit milahs. Those of you, the goyim, they have brit milahs, that's not a brit milah. It's a modern, but they rule. You understand? They then they do it for, for, for they, the scientists oh. found out the positive part of the brit milah to the human anatomy. For what? For znut. The reason they have Brit Milah, that they cut off the foreskin, is for Znut. Why? They shouldn't have any STDs. A, a man who has a foreskin, he's faster to have More those diseases. Acceptable. Exactly. Acceptable. So they don't do it for a good reason. They do it for Avi Avot Hatuma. That's what they are. Esav is Avi Avot Hatuma. That's why he does it. Don't give him Kav Zechut. That that the Ramchal gave Kav Zechut for Esav, he didn't give Kav Zechut for his descendants. He gave Kav Zechut to Esav himself. Why? We see that the descendants of Esav, the Navi says, in fact, today I was learning this Navi. It's going to be this week's Haftarah. Most 
converts come from Esav. Why? Not because he's a tzaddik. He's not a tzaddik. Because his mother was a Jew. His mother came from a good place. Because his mother came from a good place, he has good sparks in him. Those good sparks eventually become Jewish. You understand? Not that he himself is a tzaddik. He's not a tzaddik. He's a Rasha Merushad. He held a grudge for his brother 20 years after for brachot. If they ask Esav a question, if you, Esav, you believe in your father's brachot, why do you care if your brother, t- if you don't believe in Hashem, why do you care if he took the brachot? What was the big He took brachot, didn't take the brachot. What's the difference he took the brachot? Ah, you believe in Hashem, like those Jews today. Say Kaddish. But he still doesn't want to keep Shabbat. But you believe in the Kaddish. Why, do you say, why don't you keep Shabbat? That's like Esau. Or they come and say, they, as if they know Torah. But they themselves, they don't keep Torah and Mitzvot Masim Tovim. Everything's for Kesef Vezahab. It's, it's, it's a Rachmanu. They have Rachmanu on these people. They're not, they're like Esau. Esau used to come to his father and say, How do you give Maaser from hay? How do you give Maaser from salt? Why did he used to say that? You think it's is. He's crazy. Obviously, he's not crazy. It's hot. Today, I was reading the Navi. A scary Navi. Uh, Isaiah. Yeshaya. Chapter... What well, chapter I was learning today? 20... No, third... Uh, 41. No, 41 was last week. This week, I was learning 42. Uh, 42, 40. One of those chapters in the 40s. Early 40s. He says over there, God said, Why do you look... God tells Isaiah, Why do you look... At the ones who who defend you. So Rash is over there. Who's he talking about? Yitzchak. Hashem says, don't look to Yitzchak for, for mercy. Because he loved the one that I hated. Who is that? Esau. And don't look to Avraham. Don't look to Avraham for help. Why? Avraham Avidu said, how will I know that I will inherit the land? Don't look to him for help. Interesting, it doesn't say anything about Yaakov, but the Gemara does say something about Yaakov. Yaakov Avinu. Who are we to say anything about that? But, we have to look at the Avot HaKadoshim. We, cannot, we don't even reach the dung of their donkey's shadow. The sh- shadow of their donkey's dung. Avraham Avinu got a Brit Milah first. How come Avraham didn't do a Brit Milah first? Adam had a Brit, Noah had a Brit, they knew the Torah, they learned Torah, they had a book of Raziel Malach. How come they didn't have a Brit? The answer is, is the Mepharshim, you're not allowed to hurt yourself. Let's say you want to hurt yourself. You want to cut yourself. You want to feel good. Like the Goyim. Masochism. Masochism? Yeah, masochists. Mm-hmm. They hurt, yeah, they hurt themselves. It makes them feel good. You ever see Arabs? They have like this parade or something. They just, yeah. cut, they just cut themselves over there. Something, it's, a, it's a weird thing. I don't know. Anyways, there's some kind of like a high on it. Anyways, so Avraham Avinu couldn't cut him, couldn't uh, give himself a brit milah until Hashem commanded him. Why halacha is your body doesn't belong to you. That's the halacha and the gemara. Your body doesn't belong to you, so therefore you can't hurt your body. You can't hurt your body because you have to give it back to the earth that you got it from. The Rabbi Daftaya says I was learning yesterday. When a person passes away, he goes to Gan Eden. If he's, if he's buried on Friday, what happens to him? No, not Kafa Keda. Chibuta Keda. No Chibuta Keda. If he's buried after the fifth hour, and yesterday we said a Chidash in a Shargi Bulim Shiur, if your minhag is to say, Shnai Mikra Vachat Targum, before the fifth hour of the day, and you always accept. You go to the mikvah before the fifth hour of the day, even if that person dies on a Friday and is buried before the fifth hour of the day, he's also safe from Chibut HaKever. Because you always accept the extra Shabbat with your Shnaya Mikra and your mikvah. So if you do that before the fifth hour of the day, if a person passes away and is buried then, he gets clean from Chibut HaKever. But I'm pretty sure everyone in this room doesn't have a long Chibut HaKer. <laughs> I'm not an Eliyahu Anavi, but I'm pretty sure. After Chibut HaKer, you go to the Deen. It says Rehu Daftayim. In the Deen, when you go to the Deen, to the Judgment, they decide how long do you need to clean yourself before you go to Gan Eden. 
So some people who, who were with women, a lot of goyot, married women, he did a lot of shtuyot, chilul shabbat in parahesia, chilul shabbat in public, he didn't do tshuva. He needs kafakela. He doesn't get 12 months in gain on this. And that's what he goes to Kafakela. After Kafakela, he goes to Gehino. In Gehino, maximum is 12 months. You don't go to Gehino for more than 12 months. Mishpat Rishaim be Gehino, Shnem Asar Chodesh. We say Kadish for the deceased for 12 months. For 11 months. I'm sorry. Why? We don't want to show people as if Kabuta B is a Rasha. But the truth is, most of the people we say Kaddish for, they're not even reaching Gehenom. Okay? After that, after he finishes Gehenom and Kafakela, I'm pretty sure everyone over here won't be more than a couple of moments in Gehenom. Um, I'm pretty sure. Why? You guys have Torah. Shara Gilgulim, Hagdama Dalit, whoever learns Torah doesn't go to Gehenom. The fire of Gehenom cannot touch him. If you're really that bad, then you'll go, go back in a Gilgul. But that time, you're not going to have Lashem again. He's, he's not coming back. We're not coming back. If Mashiach doesn't come by that time, that's done. It's done. We're going to finish it at this Gilgul. If Mashiach doesn't come, we don't want to come back down here. Then, after a person reaches, he finish, his, his, his clothes is clean. And then he goes to Gan Eden. When you go to Gan Eden, you get a new body. What body is that? Says Rabbi Udaftaye. That's the body that Adam had before the sin. The or. The or. Not the or. With the ayin. But the or. The light. The tzipor nine that you see in the light of the Havdala candle. That's the body you're going to have then. At that moment, if you're Zohe, you're going to go to the Gan Eden Ha'ilion. To the higher Gan Eden you're going to go. If you're not Zohe, you're going to go to Gan Eden Atachton. But then, you see, that, that that's the problem. When you're in Gan Eden Atachton, you could see what's going on in Gan Eden Ha'elion. And then you're going to be like, wow, I really want to go up there. Then you're going to ask to come back down here. Because the only way to go back up there is to come back down here and to work again. You don't want to, in a way, you don't want to do that. But in a way, you really want to go to the Gan Eden Ha'elion. And if you have a Zechut, you're going to go to Gan Eden the Atzilut. That's the highest Gan Eden. But that still is not going to even compare to what you're going to experience in Tchiyat Admetim, in the resurrection of the dead. In the resurrection of the dead, your body and your soul will combine, will fuse into this being that even Adam Harishon didn't imagine he could fuse into this being. It's going to be such a being that a Goy the Navi Zachariah says, he's going to hold your tzitzit and he's going to say, come, teach me what's Hashem. I was learning this with somebody on Sunday. It's a Navi Zachariah. He's going to hold your tzitzit and he's going to say, teach me Hashem. What's Hashem? The goyim that you believe that were so great and they were so amazing. They're going to come to you and say, do you teach me Hashem? But it all starts with the first mitzvah in the Torah. It's called Brit Mila. If you guys will look on the board, we're going to learn Brit Milah according to the Ari Kadosh. The Ari says, I'm going to read you right now. In a Brit Milah, you have four steps. Milah, cutting off Esav, the foreskin. Pri'a, cutting, ripping the membrane, which most Mohalim do together. They do it in one shot. But let's say he does it. Mila, Pri'a, last step. Good, Mitzitza. I was going to say that's the last one, but Mitzitza is sucking the blood. And the last step, which is the one of the most important steps, who says Bore Peri Hagefin? That step we're going to see is when everything comes down down here. Let's go step by step. I'm going to try to do this on the board. It's not the best board. <laughs> So let's try to do this step by step. It's the best boy, that's all we got. Quite a good one. Whoever learns this today, you probably learn more than the biggest Rosh Hashiva in his life. In Kabbalah Mila, at least. First of all, let's understand one thing. The human body is based on 10 
vessels that God created in the beginning of the world. What are they? Yeah. It's your human body. Stand up, stand, st stand straight up. That's who you are. Keter, your brain, two parts is Chokhmah and Bina. In the middle, you have the tree of life. Cerebellum. In your brain, the cerebellum, that's the dot. Your right hand is Chesed, your left hand is Gvura. Your body is the biggest part. You see, the biggest part here is Tiferet. Your right and left leg is Netzach and Hod. And your Brit Milah is the one with the Klipa. You see, it has two parts here Esav and Ishmael. That's your Yesod. Your Malchut is what we're trying to get to. That's what the Brit Milah is. When a person is born, your Brit Milah happens in the, set, in the eighth day that you're born. Why? Who here could tell me how many kings ruled Edom? Edom before a king ruled Israel. Parashat Vayishlach. We're gonna get there soon. What'd you say? Seven. Seven kings. The eighth king was at the same time. The seven seven kings ruled Edom, which is Esav. We're trying to get rid of Esav. That's the blue. We're trying to get rid of him. We don't want him. Seven kings ruled Edom before a king ruled Israel. That's seven days of the Klippa. What are the names of those seven kings? Number one, I'm going to write them on the top here. You got it over here? Yeah? The first king is the king of Dat, of the Klippa, of the Yetzer Hala. His name was Bela. That's why it's not so good if a woman's name is Bela. Bela, king of Chesed is called Yovav. Gvura is Chusham. Tiferet is called Hadad. That's the kings of Edom, Abraham. That's the, every person who's born, for seven days they go through these seven kings. <laughs> they go through these seven kings. Those are the times where you're not considered full Jew until you get to the eighth day, which is infinity. In infinity, you reach Netzach Metzachim. We're going to get to him. Hadad is Tiferet. Netzach and Hod are two brothers. Your two legs are two brothers. The angels, their two legs are really one, one leg, right? When we pray Shmonai, so your two legs have to be one. one. That's called Samla. That's Netzach and Od. Yesod, his name is Shaul. Shaul HaMelech came from here, by the way. That was his... That's why he never lasted as a king. Because he came from the breaking of the vessels. He came from the original kings. And then you have one, two, three, four, five, six. Because he's two kings. Six. Five, six, seven. And the last king is just the day of your breaching eyes. It's called Hadar. Let's see who over here... Could tell me what mitzvah is called a hadar. Whoever gets this, etro. Yeah. I should make my questions harder. Yeah. You, you got it way really too quick. way too quick. You got it. Yeah. Your etro is called a pre etz hadar. hadar. The eighth king of Hedom was called hadar. That's your etro. That's why if a woman wants to get pregnant, what do we tell her to do? Bite. Take the etro, bite the pitom off, or eat the pitom of a tzaddik. By the way, I still have my pitom if you guys want to... Uh, Impregnate your wives. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying you get for my wife, but... I don't know, that's going to work. <laughs> so, uh, the etrog! That's why some Tzadikim used to be makpit, to get an etrog with a pitom. The pitom, that's the brief. You tell her, don't put the foreskin in the oshibash. Just take the etrog and rip off of the pitom. Rip the pitom off. That's the brief. He knows what he's doing, obviously, when he shakes the love and throws. That's the Hadar. That's the Brit Milah. Right here. That's the day of your Brit Milah. On the eighth day, when you're Hadar, you turn into an Etro. Let's erase these eight kings. So these are also the breaking of the vessels? Also? Right. So the first seven days of your creation, what goes on in a family's house? Who gets the Sandak? Who gets the Kisei Liao? Jangan Ozi. 
Why is there Janganozi? Because a lot of you're in the seven out. days of the breaking of the vessels. Understand? What happens on the eighth day? Very important thing happens. It's gonna, it's get, that what happens on the eighth day of your Brit Milah. If the Mohel knows what he's doing, he could set your life. The child's life. The child's life. He can make his Brit Kodesh Kodeshi. If he knows what he's doing. Unfortunately, we today, we have this Tfeka in the head. And as long as the kid doesn't cry a lot. As long as this, as long as that. It's a great Mohel. My brother was in a Brit yesterday. The, Brit, the Mohel was coming late. It was, they made a, a very big, bad mistake. You have to make a Brit earliest in the morning. Because Avraham Avinu is the Baal Brit. Ve'ashkem Avraham. Babok. You got to do the Brit in the Bokeh. The Mohel came in, they didn't post a Shkia. It was almost Shkia. You can't do a Brit in that night. It's like Tefillin. It's a Ot. And he says, okay, you do the Brit. So he said, okay, I'll do the Brit on one condition. I'm doing Mitzitzah Bapeh. I'm going to suck the blood with the Mitzitzah Bapeh. Who said that? Your My brother. Right brother said, I do the I do the way of the Ariya Kadosh. I do the Mitzitzah Bapeh. He said, you see the mother's tears? She was crying. Achaz v'shalom, he's going to... Do the mitzitzah bapeh. I want to read you what the Ari says. What's the, what's the ma'ala of a mohel does mitzitzah bapeh? Says the Ari Kadosh, eh, the Ari in Parashat Lech Lecha. He says like this. Ashre, ashre mohel. Uh, blessed is the mohel she kaven. That will have kavana. She lo yitame brit hayelet. That the brit of the yelet will never be tame. In the mitzitzah, when he sucks the blood out of the brit. Look what it says in Tamea Mitzvot. Hamala Tinok Bekavana, one who does the Brit Milah to the baby with Kavanot, he knows what he's doing when he does it. Lo Tame Brito. He will never make his, his Brit Tame. And the Sidur Harashash it says like this I heard from my Rebbe, whoever, the, 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 the Mohel that will do the Brit to the baby with Kavana, Yishmor Brita will always be Shomer his Brit. You won't need all this self-help books, all this, all this Shi'urim. You won't need all of that. Why? The Mohel will do the job for the child. The child will have a good, like his Kodesh Kodashim will be revealed right away. Says the Ariya Kadosh. Hamoalim, the Mohel that cuts the Orla is Zocheh. To be in the Yesod, that means every Mohel, when he passes away, and he has the right Kavanah, his Neshama goes straight to the Yesod. If he knows what he's doing. Says the Ariya Kadosh. Every Mohel that doesn't do the Kavanah correctly, Eliyahu Anavi doesn't come to the Brit. He sends a messenger. Because Eliyahu Anavi has 600,000 messengers. And he doesn't go himself. I mean, the, the Mohel doesn't know what he's doing. Ela Sholeach Shaliach. He sends a shaliyah. <laughs> Look what he's saying over here. Says the Ariya Kadosh. Whoever does mitzitzah bapeh, he sucks. How do you do mitzitzah bapeh? Okay. Happened once. In my first son, what happened was, both of my sons, I did a mitzitzah. Both of my sons. Mitzitzah means, after the mohel cuts the esa and rips the Yishmael, now there's blood that comes out. The black blood, there's, ten, there's five pure bloods. And five, impure. impure bloods. So what do you do to purify his blood? It's so it won't wine. be metameh his brief. You take wine, red wine specifically, and with the wine, you suck out a little bit of blood. What happened once in my son's brief? I sucked out his blood and I spit it out and somebody's shoe was over there. And it fell straight on the guy's shoe. It was suede. It was suede shoe. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that the guy never wore that shoe, that shoe again. Anyways, but... What ha the secret is that blood you have to spit inside also the earth, earth. You gotta put it inside earth. Why the nachash, the snake, afar lachmo. Is the, the lechem of the, 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 the bread of the snake is the afar. Afar is dirt. Dirt. And also the orla, don't put it in the oshibash. The orla, the foreskin, you have to put it inside dirt. You have to bury it inside dirt. On Shabbat, you're allowed to do that. You gotta put it in Shabbat even. Yeah. You gotta put it Prepare. inside the dirt, put it inside the dirt, and you're gonna make the kid be Shomer's breed forever. But 
the mohel, you think just the mohel is just, hey, he cuts the breed and you know, as long as the kid doesn't, no, he has to have kavana, cut esav, rip Ishmael. Now I'm gonna read you what it says away. Let's look at the board for a second. Child is born, all of his chesed and gvura, his chesed and gvura is inside his brain. It didn't reach his body yet. He doesn't have the power to grow yet. His chesed and his gevura is five times God's name. You see, I put a hey over here. Hey, hey, I put a 26 over here. What's the 26 means? Yudke vavke, yudke vavke. Five times yudke vavke. That's his chesed. What happened is, what happened to his gevura, so also five halayad, five God, times God's name, that went to his yesod without asking questions. It already went down over there. Why? When Adam, I'm teaching you big secrets over here right now. When Adam ate from Etz Adad, he caused the gvura to go down to the brit before the chesed goes down. That's why Cain was born before Hevel. If he wouldn't have sinned, Hevel would have been the firstborn. And the world would never have had a biot. Why? Hevel would have been the farmer and Cain would have been the shepherd. Why did Cain sin? Because he was the farmer. He couldn't handle the hard work. Hevel was the shepherd. It should have been the opposite. Hevel should have been the tefillin and Cain should have been the tzitzit. What's easier to wear, tzitzit or tefillin? Tzitzit, tzitzit is easier to wear. Cain can't handle hard work. Hevel could have handled the hard work. Because of Adam HaRishon's Avera, Cain went down to the Yisot first. That's why any person who comes from Cain, Esav and Ishmael gets him really bad. The Orla gets him really bad. The five ha chasadim is inside the kid's brain. It's inside the kid's brain. What happens, to get it down over here, the chesed doesn't want to come down. Why? If he comes down to the Yisod, what's going to eat him up? Ishmael. Esa Ishmael. First of all, Esav. Esav and Ishmael. So what do we do? We have to cut out the first... We got to kill Esav. We gotta knock him out. Esav Saneti. We gotta kill Esav. We gotta get rid of Amalek. So what do we do? That's Purim. By the way, we gotta get rid of this part. You see this part over here? We gotta get rid of it. How do you get rid of it? You don't. You can't rip it off with your nail. You need an actual knife. You have to rip him out with a knife, with a surgical knife. <laughs> Sharp. Metal. 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 You gotta rip with barzel. You have to rip him out. This barzel could only be ripped. This or lakum with barzel. It's because he's dinim kashim, he's bad din. Understand? Once you rip him, the five chasadim, they have no more fear. What do they do? They come down. So it comes down. You see over here? It comes down here. It comes down here. 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 And here. Once they see Esav is gone, once the Mohel does the brief milah, and Esav is gone. So the five chasadim, the five names of God in the kid's brain, have no more fear to come down into the kid's body. But it won't come to the Yesod yet. Why? Well, who's there still? Ishmael is still over there. He doesn't want to come down. What does he do? He first comes down to its respective kelim. Chesed, the right hand. Gvura, the left hand, Netzachot, and Tiferet. The problem is like this. Your Tiferet, which is your body, your trunk, is a very big body. So the name of God, which is 26, right? Yudke Vavke is 26. It needs to split into three parts. But you can't split 26 into three even parts. So what does it split to? 18 and 8. Now I'm going to teach you halacha, what happened when the brothers sold Yosef and what happens when you steal, when you steal, in, 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 uh, in uh, when you steal, when you're privately stealing, Gana versus a Gazlan. You see these two parts, the name of God is 26, you have 18, 18, 9 and 9 is 18 plus 8, correct? Mm -hmm. So 18 plus 8 is 26. These two parts, that's the buyer. This is the seller. When the buyer steals the eight, the seller, 
and it leaves this part open, he's called a gazlan. When the brothers sold Yosef, what did they do in actuality? They stole this eight from the top of the Tiferet and they left it open and the Klippa could have eaten it. When the Klippa, when the Yetzirah reaches the top of the Tiferet, you know what happens? Chaos. Galut. You understand what I'm saying? So what happens when a Mohel does the Milah, when does the Milah? He has to get this eight, you see this over here? Down here. He has to get this down here to the Yisos. But he can't get it down here until he gets rid of Ishmael. How does he get rid of Ishmael? He takes his nails. That nail is from who? Adam? Harishon. That's where your nail comes from. And he rips it apart. He doesn't get rid of it. He rips it. After he rips it, Ishmael is gone. <coughs> right? When Ishmael is gone, when he does the Priya, and there's just the inner, the Kodesh HaKodashim left. And this comes down over here, now these three parts say, ah, now I'm ready to go down. Now if you take two, three names of God, 26 plus 26 plus 26, what do you get? 78. 78 is what? Maza. La. Now look at this crazy thing. These 78 chesed's are coming to already sweeten the 78 gvuras in the Yisod. 78 plus 78 equals 156 Yosef. That's what Yosef's neshama was from. His neshama was the Brit Milah. That's why when they sold him to Mitzrayim, Hashem said, I can't forgive that. Whatever I told Abraham to do, you did the complete opposite. So even if he forgave you, but you're not forgiving what I did to the whole world. So therefore, till today, we're paying for that. That's the mazala. But, when, but it happens to every child. When? In his, the kid's brit milah. When the mohel rips up the priya, he opens up this eight. And it goes down to the Yisod. When do these three parts go down? You're not going to believe it. After the Kiddush. During the Kiddush. During the Kiddush. That's why the person who says, Bore Pri 26 plus 26 plus 18 equals 70. Which is Gematria? Yain. When he says, Bore Pri he's bringing down the last 70 pieces. And while he does that, he sweetens the last gvurot of the child. And when he does that with the right kavana, the kid will never be pogim his breed. Mm. What if it's past eight days? That's already... Do you understand what I'm telling you? What's in the kavana of the Moel? Now imagine when Abraham Avinu did his own brit milah. How old was he? 99. Why 99? The ninth sphere is Chesed. Keter, Chokhmah, Bina, Chesed, Giborah, Tifer, Netzachod, Yesod. How old was he? 99, yeah? So he was the Yesod of the Yesod. So what did he really do? Breach me off for all of us. Do you understand what Abraham Avinu did? And that breach me out at the age of 99, you got, your minds right now should be exploding. It should be exploding. It should be. I don't know if it is. It's not comprehending. Then it said, if it's not, if it's not comprehending, that's, that's, that's another thing. The, during the Mila, now look at the word, how do you say Brit Mila, right? Mem, Yud, Lamed, and Hey, take the Mem and the Lamed, what do you get? 70. The Yud and the Hey, you get 16. 8 and 8. This eight is oh, 15. Huh? 15. No, 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 plus one. Yeah. 18 is 16. That, that eight is coming down to this eight, 16. The mem is 70. That's this 70 over here. In the Mila itself, mm -hmm. you have the power of the old debris when he says, Al Hamila. So what happens? If you're a smart father, you're strong in the brain, when you want to give your kid a brit Mila, you get a person who knows what he's doing. Because if he knows what he's doing, he can make a shmirat at the kid's brit. Now today's shiura, may I be honest with you, 
It's a shiur for people who are very advanced. I'll be honest with you. It's a strong shiur. But, why am I telling you like this? Blessed Hashem, you guys should have more children. Amen. Sons, daughters, sons. <laughs> <laughs> when you have those sons, when you pick up Mohel, think twice. Do you want him to be Shomeri's breed? Or do you or do not want him Shomeri's breed? If you want him to be Shomeri's breed, come to me, I'll give you a nice Mohel. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a nice Mohel that knows what he's doing. Just in the pouring of the wine in the cup, in the cup. What's, how do you say a cup in Hebrew? Kos. Kos. and Samik is how much? 80. What's the vav? 6. 86 is gematria? Elohim. The gvura. You put the wine, the 70, and the 86, you remember my take the deal. But it's the kavan. Every kirush, you're supposed to have this kavan. I think it's also not in this. Yeah. Exactly. So when you're doing mitzvot, you have to have the machshava. The machshava beneath inside. So I want to say thank you to the sponsors of this week's year, Bishud Rachel Imein. Tomorrow night is a special night. There's no, there's gonna be a shiur here by my brother who happens to be a moel. With And still stuck in I want to tell you that. Um, Hashem should give you a lot of bracha to understand what was said here today. Because when I taught you guys here today, people come back in a couple of gilgulim to learn this. So the whole concept is messed up if you're not eight days. That's very if you don't have a brit in the eight days, of course, it's the whole everything is. We could, we could, we could fix it, by the way. Have How do you to fix it? How you, what? Say one word. Say one word. Huh? No. What? There's a couple of day, weeks of the week of the year. You can fix it during Shabbat. How? How? Fast. When you do the tikkun during the shavuot, well, why is that you're fixing it? Why is that our fault? The parents chose not to do it. No, it's your fault because you wouldn't have been born in that family if you <laughs> didn't have to be born in that family. Mm. Don't uh, don't blame your parents. They have enough to fix. Don't put that on you too. But I want to tell you guys another secret: the power of the sandak. The sandak. He's connected atika kadisha. That's the kete. That's the kete. When the sandak holds the baby in his lap, he's the keter of the baby. So we're here talking about that. What's on top of the dad? The keter. The keter is the sandak. Pick your sandaks wisely. Baruch Adonai Amen, amen.